Good evening. All of you can open your videos and can communicate with each one. Good morning. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening, Indra Mani Sir. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Our time is good, actually. At least uh, by seven thirty, everybody, you know, can attend it. Yeah. Yes, sir. Then open your mic and start talking. Uh, let me take a few. Please, sir. This is Masetan here. Yeah, Masetan. Please introduce I'm yourself. Yeah, okay. Good evening. Good evening, uh, Dr. Indramani. Good evening, Dr. Susma. Good evening. Good Good evening, Professor. Good evening. Ah, good evening, sir. How are you, sir? How is your health? Oh, I'm fine. I'm doing well. Uh, everything is running well here. Yes. Ah. So, students... Uh, yeah, partly some students, senior PhD students are here. Our research work is going on. Uh, still, you know, younger those and those who are ex been working experimental, they have been no. called back. No. They have been called back to the campus. Yes, yes that's right. I, I told you also. How are you, Dr. Sushma? I am fine, sir. Sir, we have listened to your uh, lecture, micro irrigation. It is very useful. Yeah, it's going on. It's now yes, uh, yeah, eighth week, seventh week already over. Yes, sir. Eighth week going on. It is very good, sir. Very good. Give us a couple of minutes more. People are joining just now. In another couple of minutes, we'll start. You, in the meantime, all of you can talk to each other, please. Yeah, Professor Bishnathan. Yes, sir. Where is Professor Bosu? Professor Bosu. Ah. Uh, ah, Santana yeah. Bosu. Santana yeah, Bosu. Yeah. Santana Bosu, yeah. yeah he, he, he settled in Coimbatore only. Okay. Uh, he used to travel to his native and his uh, in-laws natives in Nagarkoyal and uh, Trivandrum. Also, he used to uh, 
uh, visit uh, their daughter in USA. Oh, I don't know. I think for the last about uh, five, six months, I have not contacted him. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. You need his contact, sir? Any number, email? Uh, actually, uh, Dr. Koti Sharan, uh, he, he is in touch with me. Okay. Uh, he is in touch with me. And uh, 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 Santana Bosu, I have not, my, you know, for a long time, no contact. Okay. Uh, I'll convey this to him. Mm -hmm. And also, I will uh, send you a mail uh, with his contact details. Uh, I think I have uh, his number. I have his number, contact number I have. How about Dr. Ramaswamy? Uh, he is also in Coimbatore only. Okay. okay. He was going to a uh, private engineering college. Uh -huh. uh, they are offering agriculture engineering. Hmm. So he was uh, head of the department, maybe now uh, working from home because of this uh, lockdown. And now uh, from September 1st onwards, our colleges, schools are also open. So in a paced manner, okay, okay. with uh, not uh, more than fifty percent of strength, we started working. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we have Professor Gajan Singh joined. Can you unmute yourself, Narendra Shah, Dr. Uh, Ramesh Deshpande? So Gajan Singh, I can I can see uh, you are muted. You would unmute there. Hello, you, Dr. Said. Hello, just to yes. say hello to you. Hello, sir. How are you? <laughs> yes, yes. I'm fine. I'm yes. fine. Yeah, you are doing great work. We are very happy what you are doing. <laughs> yeah. You, you are trying a lot of people together. It's great. Yeah. Ramesh Deshpande ji, you have not taken my offer of giving a talk to IIT Bombay students who work in this technology and development area. Uh, you are you are great people. I don't think I have much to offer to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, this if is you, if, you, uh, if, you, uh, if you need advice on if you need advice on economic policies or financial policies or management, you know, I can I can contribute, but. Right. If you want technology, you are the gurus there, you see. I mean, and we don't we, have... We, we, as I last time told you, we yeah. have this sector for uh, uh, policy studies, you know, CPS uh, is yeah. IIT's latest addition into its academic program. So, yeah. Center for Policy Studies uh, helps prepare those white papers and, you know, like uh, yeah. what should be the policy guideline given a theme. So, uh, if, if rural development is a theme and if you could sort of, you know, say something on policies towards rural development. Sure, sure, sure. You, you know, in fact, in, in fact, I have a point here and I would need your help. You see, we, we really need to look at India's development, uh, uh, development as, uh, model. You see, that is fundamental. Is it, uh, right, hello. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Let me, let me, since you are on this topic, we can talk about it. <clears throat> All right. the work is done by government, you know, through, I mean, of course, public funds, through government departments, through contractors, with very little community involvement. Mm -hmm. You see, the future work in agriculture and rural development has to be geared towards climate change, you know, and you cannot do climate change uh, adaptation mitigation without community involvement, yeah? without community involvement. How do you bring about that? Are they, I'll send you a note. Hello. Right. Sure, sure. it will be great. Uh, Sayed, just last, uh, this one, one sentence to uh, sort of, you know, uh, say something what uh, Ramiji has said. You know, like uh, Ramiji, we have a, a one course on development theory because since our yeah. curriculum in uh, master's and PhD is on technology and development. So people get yeah. degrees in MTech in technology and development. There is one course which is called a development theory where all the models are being taught. 
and one yes. of them you know like how do you do pras and rras and all that so which yeah. which you are familiar with you as an economist so sure, sure. we wait let us offline we will do a discussion and uh, thanks sir uh, for allowing us to sort of uh, do this chat uh, on yeah. this platform yeah no thank you thank you we are, yeah let's talk about that thank you yeah. uh, dr indramani dr indramani uh, can you hear me dr indramani yes please yes please yeah please help dr ganjan singh just now i was trying to help him if he has some issues to join in can you please help him out please Okay. Or uh, should I send him? Uh, no, I send him link everything. He has some issue. Uh, we'll wait for a while. No. Anyway, doesn't matter. Yes. Uh, we can. I think he, he will join. He has joined. Yes, but he has some. He's available. Unmuting. Yeah, yeah. He's a um, problem unmuting. I think he's try. I told him to try with cell phone. His cell phone also he can try once. But for a few minutes, I think we can. Uh, speakers are here yeah two speakers yes. are there rest okay. will be joining what is that ktk is ready ktk is ready ready he'll join uh, maybe as third or fourth speaker let's okay. see so is that he'll he has a meeting with his director maybe he will join uh, after 8:15 okay okay so we will start with the dr masai tum masai tum okay The next speaker is Dr. Vengada Chalapati. Great. okay uh, dear friends uh, let us thank you very much let's start now i think so yeah thank you very much all of you uh, for joining today's session and today's session has uh, a special significance it is from uh, tamil nadu agricultural universities alumni so we have uh, speakers in different areas actually uh, the one of the areas which we are talking for a long time is about small implements which farm machinery is not covered yet so we have a, a first talk on the small implements today's session second one we also have a food engineering subject we have uh, very interesting and third one we have also on uh, climate resilient this about uh, industrial watersheds how to make it fourth one most important we have is the water problem uh, so what are the issues and what are the solution uh, these are all the people who are experienced we have from the research institution as well as people from the department who have worked or today so i i have i would like to invite uh, professor viswanathan uh, he will be the co-host for this particular session like last time we also had a co-host so we are planning for the next session also similar one from somewhere right now i want to from tnu alumni professor viswanathan i want to have the co-host he will be introducing the speakers and uh, we'll go ahead and start right now so professor viswanathan please uh, thank you thank you dr sayed sir 
It's a, a privilege and a honor for DNA alumni to have this uh, com today's uh, complete event with all the speakers. So the first speaker uh, is uh, Engineer A. Masitun on the topic status and needs of uh, small farm implements. Uh, Masitun, you can uh, come to video. Uh, he's our graduate uh, from TNAU, graduated in the year uh, 1995. And he started his uh, career in farm development and uh, plantation industries. And he completed his uh, ICWA and MBA in operation management in the year uh, 2003. Uh, he, he was working in uh, VST Tillers uh, Bengaluru. He, was, he became the head of the farm implements division there. And he left uh, VST Tillers in the year 2020. And now he is a consultant and entrepreneur dealing with the solar pumps and uh, other uh, devices. So with this uh, brief introduction, I welcome him for his talk on uh, status and needs of small farm implements. Thank you. We can start, uh, Masito. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much about my uh, introduction and brief about me. Uh, thank you very much. I will share my uh, screen now. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, proceed. My voice and uh, presentations. Uh, clear. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, thank you very much, sir. So uh, I will uh, my myself uh, Masetun already explained, uh, Dr. Vishwanathan, sir. I have started after completing my BA agriculture. I started in uh, career in plantations as a plantation engineer in Sterling Tree Magnum. After that, I worked in almost uh, uh, three years in Kolana Group of Companies, that is organic farming development. So almost uh, first six years of my career, I worked in agriculture and other industries for developing a farming, particularly this organic farming and uh, tea good plantations companies. So after that, I started moved to sales and uh, marketing department. Initially, I worked the Mahindra and Mahindra. Then I moved to Sonalika. Then I escorts in escorts. I worked as a regional development manager in Tamil Nadu, Kerala. Then last assignment was I was worked as a head farm equipment in VST Tillers Tractors Limited. I have worked and I am responsible for developing this, particularly this uh, compact tractor series for attachments and uh, self propelled farm implements, that is, uh, particularly the reaper, transplanter, and uh, power tiller and uh, tractor attachments. So, all the business I was handled in uh, VST and VST Tillers Tractors Limited. Now, I started the uh, 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 private entrepreneurships. I am dealing with the solar pumps and uh, irrigation system. Parallelly, I worked as a consultant for the farm mechanizations. This is a uh, small brief about me. Uh, shall I go ahead, sir? Yes, yes. Yeah. So I'll start about this. Uh, why the small farm equipment that talks about this small farm equipments? Why they're needed? If you see this slide, we can able to. Everybody knows that. Our GDP is uh, initially it is a 40 50 percentage. Now it has gone down to 15 16 percent. But the last two three years, it is due to COVID, our uh, GDP is a little bit slightly higher. Earlier it was 15 16, now it is slightly increased. Last year it is 18 19. So it is slightly increased. Uh, There's one of the industry, it is due to COVID, it is not affected. It is grown also. It is the only agriculture industries. Then another factors, mostly the our land holding capacity. It is day by day, it is down. Initially, it is almost uh, 30, 40 acres holding per farmers. Now, currently, it is less than two acres. That means less than one hectare per farmer is uh, land holding capacity. So these are these factors we want to be see why this uh, small farm implements is required. So almost 90% of farmers are small and medium farmers who having this land, holding the land less than one hectare, that is worth uh, of less than 10 lakhs. That's why we need a small farm equipment. If you see this uh, productivity of India, 
and uh, if you see this uh, first graph we our india is we are talking about india is agriculture country all these fundas and uh, growth we are the number one in uh, most of the uh, three four uh, tea jute uh, sugar cane sugar industry it is a number one in the world but if you see this average production capacity of india it's as a clover per hectare uh, per hectare uh, sorry uh, kg per hectare it is less than 2000 kg per hectare it is very 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 less than world average even it is small countries like sri lanka bangladesh we are not even that much level we are very low behind sri lanka china belgium netherland we are far far below if you see this farm power availabilities we have said uh, currently is, uh, india is uh, uh, number one exporter in the tractor industry we are also number one uh, export country so almost uh, uh, more than uh, 10 lakhs tractor can able to produce and sell it and export it but our farm power availability is 1.7 kilowatt per hectare compared to other countries it is a far far higher if you see the china usa it is far far higher our farm power productivity is very 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 less if you see this graph whenever we are increase the farm power the productivity also we can able to increase so the productivity and farm power it is proportionate proportionate type whenever this farm power increase the productivity also increase so we are the agriculture country we want to double the farmer income we want to increase our productivity then parallelly we have to improve our farm power then only we can able to improve our productivity or in, increase our uh, uh, economic condition of this farmer and doubling the farmer income all things depends upon the farm product uh, farm power availabilities then if you see the second graph even though it is a 1 point kilowatt 7.7 kilowatt availability as a average only the punjab and haryana is having more than 4000 kilowatt per hour hectare but other most of the states like bihar himachal orissa chhattisgarh rajasthan even the maharashtra maharashtra is number 1 in the sugar cane and all still it is very very low it is not even 1 kilowatt per, uh, productivity capacity is less than 1000 kg per hectare so it is almost it's a Uh, pathetic situations the so farm power distribution productivity also it is not even evenly distributed punjab haryana is supported to increase our average uh, things other states very very low so even we are talk about this farm power availability is 1.7 to 1.8 kilo watts per hectare but it is not a uh, not a real uh, farm power availability so all are because of the tractor all this corporate are selling producing this tractors and selling in the market more than 8 lakh tractor per annum selling in india that's why this our farm power it is shown as a 1.7 1.8 kilowatt per hectare but if you remove this farm power of the tractor other than tractors nothing actually so even this oil engines other uh, self propelled engines Uh, farm power is almost uh, less than 0.5 kilowatt per hectare so balance all are tractor 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 selling is uh, keep on increasing because of it is like a push market then if you see this what are the challenges for facing this uh, increasing our farm power what are the challenges what are the drivers is availability in india challenges is cost is constraint i when i was in the first slide itself i explained our farm holding capacity is less than 1 hectare the worth rupee is less than 10 lakhs but keep on it is going down but the cost of the tractors and other implements two three essential implements card no it is more than 10 lakhs so the basic of the farmer is a land land cost is less than 10 lakhs if you want a minimum some tractors it is more than 10 lakhs so cost is a main concern so and the second point is land fragmentations so our land holding capacity is year on year it is going down so we have to think it on this how to so carpet farming or uh, some um, uh, corporate 
active farming, other uh, farming uh, practices, and other which will improve this farm power availability and the economics of the farmers. But land, as of now, the land permit keep on going down and only. Then the third point is unpredictable monsoon. The monsoon earlier, if you see the last 20 years before, monsoon is on time, and we are getting this monsoon in time. But now, where every forecast or uh, statistics is telling, we are getting this average monsoon. But this monsoon distribution is overnight, even this one day it is 1000 uh, mm, one day is 700 mm, one day is 800 mm, like this. It, the distribution is very bad. This average uh, rainfall getting a farmer by five to 10 days only, remaining all are dry days. So the farm, this uh, monsoon prediction is very poor. Monsoon getting also delayed, monsoon is delayed, distribution is delayed. So all these parameters we have to be think it out. These are the challenges when we are improving our productivity and improving our farm power. These are the challenges. What are the drivers? What are the support is availability of credit. Now it is everybody is getting credit. Even though credit getting is a high interest rate, but credit is available. Farmer getting a credit. They have the uh, possibilities and getting credit but the rate of interest is very high. Then low penetration farm machinery. As of now, we have 1.7 to 1.8 kilowatts per hectare. Compared to other uh, part of the world, it is a very, very low. So high potential is available. We are this uh, agriculture country. We have the land holding, everything, but as of now, it's a very low penetration. So farm power potential is very high. Then low farm power availabilities, that is also Low productivity is compared to other country, even this Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, we are the low. So farm productivity can able to increase. That is a potential is available. Then opportunity new markets, it's a very low, new, new technologies, new, all the things that's coming. So opportunity is very high for increasing farm power. So once farm power increased, automatically our productivity will increase. Farmer income or farmer ability to income it will be increased. So automatically we can able to easily achieve our farm uh, doubling the farmer farmer incomes. If you see this graph, this is a statistics prepared by one of the consultant called as AC Nelson, submitted to the government of India. This is in 2015-16. He has prepared, he has traveled and studied all over India on various crop, particularly for high uh, cultivating crop like a paddy, cotton, sugarcane, pulses, uh, all the things he studied. When you see this graph, our tractor power is initially it is okay. Plowing, land preparations, leveling, up to planting it's okay. After that, indra cultivations, our farm power availability is almost zero. For indra cultivations, we don't have any much farm power availabilities. Then again, harvested is okay. Harvested and transportations, it is a good. So in between these area after planting before harvesting our farm power or farm power technology new technology or farm power is zero for particularly in paddy in cotton also you can put the green line it shows as a pardon me sir i am not able to get it some voice. No, no, you proceed. Okay. So cotton cultivation also that initially this tractor uh, for used for uh, uh, plowing and other operation. Inter cultivation, we don't, we are not used. We don't have this uh, uh, systems. Uh, so all these factors, it's available. So in this period, the, from after the planting until harvest, we are mostly used as a manpower only. You can able to see the graph. We are used a manpower only. So current situations, manpower also, it is a costlier. So the small farmer cannot, it's not viable. He cannot be able to get the labor also. And even if you get a labor, it is not a viable on this cultivation, even like a sugarcane. Sugarcane also up to planting, it is available. Mechanization is available. After planting, weeding, intercultivation, spraying, uh, uh, threshing, nothing, it's not available. Only the harvester. A sugarcane harvest also, it is a costlier, it is not a viable project. So harvest also very difficult currently. More than 80% still harvesting of sugarcane in manual only. 
sugarcane harvester is not used. Uh, sugarcane harvester used only 10% of sugarcane harvesting. Like this, potato also uh, high cultivation. Potato also only planting, uh, plowing, land preparation only tractor use. Remaining all practices by manpower only. No other uh, mechanization is not available. Like wheat also, wheat also highest in India. That is also most of the 90% of operations used by manpower only, not in mechanization. The reason all are our farmers are small farmer. They are not able to use this uh, mechanizations. They are not affordable to use this mechanizations. They are uh, not able to get this mechanization also. In the slide, uh, there are three. Can you, can you wait for a while? If you, cannot, you cannot interfere in between the top, please. Questions will be asked afterwards. Okay. Please, you continue, Masitam. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. So, why this small holding? I explained earlier. Average farm holding size is less than one hectare. That's why we need a small farm equipment, big practices like a sugar and harvesters. A uh, mechanization is available, but this uh, mechanization harvester cannot be affordable. It is not available also. That's why farmers are not using much in the harvesting. The purchase of tractor with the three, four implements need a minimum of 10 lakhs, but he is not able to get a loans or uh, it's not a viable also for the small farmers. Because of that, Average utilization of the tractors has reduced from 1,400 to 500 hours 10 years before. Now, the tractor usage also has gone down to 800 to 900 hours per year only. That is also more than 50% used for non-commercial agriculture. As at a statistics process, for purpose, we are calculate based on the tractor power also, but more than 50% we are used non-agriculture and commercial usage. Then most of the government policies and funds Utilize in high cost machinery and non viable equipments like harvesters, high cost equipments. They are funded high cost equipments, and that is also correct. I am not denied that. That is also correct because of high cost machineries, it's not viable. So, their funding or supporting to the farmers to utilize this new technology. But because of that, the small farmers 90% or 80 to 90% of the small farmers cannot able to afford even small equipments, lesser cost. And because of that, they are not able to purchase. They are not used. So they are using only manpower. Because of that, they are not used the mechanization and they are not able to payable. Ma That's why. Masetum, yes, sorry, sir. Twin, you have to go ahead a little bit faster. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Advantage of small farm equipments is small farm implements can able to do like a bigger uh, tractors, the small tractor also can able to equal to the bigger tractors and like uh, uh, line showing crops and archers, plantations, the small farm equipment like a tiller and small tractor can able to do better than big tractors and intercultivation operations can able to do in this uh, small farm equipment. It is a less investment and more profit and less dependency and timely available. That advantages I already explained. If you want uh, bigger tractors, need a, with the, the three, four implements, need a nine to 10 lakhs, but it is a small implements or a small uh, tractor or power tillers, it's need a four, five lakhs. So because of the investment, they are getting a more profit and farm also is a viable. And intercultivation operations less than one, uh, 1.2 meter spacing crops, that small implements can able to do all these intercultivation, all the operations. So that will be more viable and profitable also to the farmers. Like a small, small, uh, there's one more disadvantage of this small farmers, uh, small implements. It is not a familiar to all over India. It is like a scattered to the specific area. For example, Ratun managers, this figure is a Ratun manager. The cost is 25,000 rupees. This machines is more used in uh, uh, Gujarat and uh, uh, Maharashtra, but in Tamil Nadu and other state, they are not used. But if they are purchased and use this, uh, this implements, the farmer get a more benefit and save the cost of the farmers for uh, stubbling this uh, saving doublings and fertilizer application and everything. Like this, reverse rotavator. 
reverse rotor rotor is familiar in Gujarat, but other area now only it is establishing actually. This small uh, reverse rotor rotor can able to do pulverizing, weeding, earthing up, all the application can able to do. The cost is 25,000 only. Like other one, plastic mulch laying uh, machines. This machine can able to do four or five applications. For example, ridge farming, covering the uh, plastic sheets, drip laying, drip uh, line laying, and fertilizer application and earthing up. All things can able to do. The cost of the machine is only 25,000 rupees. Like a drip winding machines. The drip, everybody is laying this drip. After this one crop, they want to wind up and prepare the land again. So winding, when we are lining up, 50% of the lateral, it is a wastage due to this drop of this uh, dripper and other uh, drip laying is most of the 50% will be lateral will be damaged. The cost is 10,000 rupees. They can able to avoid these damages and other expenses. Other one is multi-purpose seed drill, power tiller attached multi-purpose seed drill. It's a very much famous in Gujarat. The cost is only 20,000 rupees. This machine can able to attach to the power tiller. It can able to work like a cultivator, duck food cultivator, leveler, and ridgers, and like a seed drill. The cost is only 25,000 rupees. If you want a seed drill, it is more than uh, 70, 80,000 rupees, but the small 25,000 attachments can able to do. But what happened now, these are the implements cannot able to get a support from the government. The small farmers can able to offer, cannot able to afford the 25,000 25, implements, but they are not even getting the support from the government because of the government support means they need a test report. But these are the implements, we don't have a test code actually. Because of the test code is not available, they are not able to give the testing of this report. So manufacturer also cannot able to get the test report because of that farmer will not get any subsidy or support from the government. So government has to be promote like innovative ideas, small, small innovative ideas, support them actually promoters or small farmers get a more uh, uh, viable business, viable uh, to the small farmers. Then test code also, we have to speed up the test code. So we can able to test it all the implements because without test code, they can able to test, they can able to get a subsidy. So we have to be uh, all uh, testing institute can able to develop a test code for all these small, small implements. Then encourage the farmers and new innovative ideas, no developers, we have to be support on this. And the current government focus on big hiring center. Another one big scope is big hiring center. I am not against the custom hiring center, but as a policy, particularly for example, Karnataka, AP, Telangana, they want to invest 50 to 1 crore custom hiring center. But custom hiring center can able to develop yeah. only for all having the experience of five years in 2000 crores turnover okay. companies, okay. companies, not a agri partners or agri entrepreneurs. As a small agri entrepreneur cannot able to invest 50 lakhs rupees. So custom hiring center okay. support given to this agri entrepreneurs with a small investment. Other thing, uh, big investment type, okay. other thing we can able to get other uh, people. So this is a good opportunity. Customer hiring center is a good opportunity for the agri entrepreneurs, okay. youngsters. They can able to support the small okay. farmers also. Okay, Masitam, I think. I think this is over, sir. Thank, Thank you very much. This Thank you. opportunity for me Thank. to express myself. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you very much. Like I, I told in the earlier time, I think we will have the questions and answer at the end of it. Just I make a few comments, uh, what I saw, Mazisam. It's a very excellent presentation. A uh, few points like uh, he was covering about uh, intercultivation is missing in India. For example, weeding is completely forgotten. Weeding is one big issue, but he has shown some of the small equipment. Uh, we have reservations about the topic of uh, whether subsidy should be given or not. It's a different issue altogether, we'll see. But I think small implements is a need of the hour, need of the day for India, especially when you look for Conservation agriculture, when you go for, you can use all the equipment, agreed. You can use all type of equipment, but the cost factor, what you told, small farms, excellent. We'll come back to the question uh, answer session. 
uh, I, I think bear with us. So we'll go to the next speaker. I will request uh, Professor Vishnadan to introduce the next speaker and tell them only 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes maximum to manage the time if possible. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay, uh, thank you, sir. So the next uh, topic is uh, food processing opportunities and uh, incentives. So today's speaker is uh, Dr. Yen Venkata Chalabadi. He is uh, Professor and Head uh, of uh, Food Engineering Division in uh, Indian Institute for uh, Food Processing Technology, Ministry of Food Processing Industries, Tanjavur. He graduated uh, again from uh, TNAU with uh, undergraduation and uh, postgraduation and joined the uh, earlier uh, Paddy Processing Research Center, which was under uh, Department of Food Processing Industries. Later, the department was upgraded to ministry and also the Paddy Processing Research Center was uh, elevated to the level of an uh, institute. So he has had his uh, doctoral degree from Gandhigram Rural Institute, uh, deemed to be a university in uh, Tamil Nadu, located at uh, Dindukal. He has contributed through his research for the farmers and the entrepreneurs, especially for uh, rice millers and for the institutional development. So he is a professor and the head of the food engineering division. I welcome him for his talk on uh, food processing opportunities and the incentives. So mainly he will cover about the government's uh, policies, uh, the opportunities provided by available and the incentives by the government so that it will be a good information for uh, all of us, which can be taken to the needy people. Thank you. Now we can start uh, Dr. Vangada Chalavati. Thank you, sir, uh, for the nice uh, and the generous introduction for this uh, August gathering. Uh, is it my voice audible, sir? Yes, yes, excellent, good. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the information, sir. And uh, respected uh, colleagues and dear friends, I'm very happy to uh, participate in this uh, uh, wonderful forum to share my uh, views about the food processing uh, opportunities uh, and incentives. Can share your slides? Yes. Is it visible, sir? Yet to come. Yeah, started. So today, as uh, Dr. Mishman said, told, I'll be uh, covering about the food processing opportunities and incentives. And it's uh, time limited, as uh, Dr. Sai told, only for 10 to 10, 15 minutes. So it will be very tough to cover uh, both opportunities and incentives. Uh, to the maximum possible, I try to give a glimpse about this uh, to these people so that uh, the colleagues can uh, uh, in share this information to the needy people. So, food processing, uh, all of you are. Sorry, sorry to acknowledge the reason why I told 10 to 15 minutes. I think I want you to come to the point directly because yes. all are experts in this team. Yes, Here yes. in this group, we have all our experts, all our uh, professionals. So I think you, I think you can make it probably. Yes, yes, definitely. That's thank why you, I, I have come to the uh, presentation to the time. Uh, so all of us uh, know that food processing is the sunrising sector. Even during this pandemic time, uh, for the past two years, most of the industries have almost to the, come to a standstill. Whereas the uh, agriculture and the food processing goes in in tandem to feed us. And even the export is going on, and then uh, they have come up in a very nice way. So it's a, a we, there is no doubt it is a sunrising sector, and uh, it's a high growth and high profit sector. So it's immense potential for value addition. And uh, as compared to the uh, other developed countries, we are processing only very very less percentage of our come of agriculture produce and horticulture produce, or even veterinary uh, <coughs> and animal produce to a very little extent. And uh, even the, even then. Is food processing now 32% of the country's total food market is processed. So, by food processing, we can solve some of the issues totally related to the rural area. It assures employment opportunities to rural people because the normally food processing industries comes in the uh, rural area and it reduced migration of use from rural to urban and increased economic rate in rural area and reduced urban pressure. When the people movement is reduced from the rural to urban, definitely this will happen. 
will come up the highlights. So India is ranked uh, uh, almost first and second in most of the uh, commodities, mainly uh, global food production, first in the milk production, and uh, second in the horticulture produce, or first in the spice, and uh, number one in the bovine population. These are the, some of the sector highlights. And the growth levers are almost, uh, there is a strong domestic demand due to our demographic population, as well as the uh, growing income, uh, increasing income, disposable income, and then uh, the both husband and wife are working. So there is a need for uh, processed food. So a lot of opportunities for the export also. So, and also government is uh, taking uh, this lead to give a lot of uh, policy support and uh, incentives to the entrepreneurs. And uh, if you look at the food processing opportunities, uh, definitely we can say, uh, we can say, we can group us five or six sectors. One is the dairy sector. So here, if you take up the, um, Technology and equipment suppliers have a lot of opportunities here. So new technology, whole chain, innovation, packaging, new product development for cattle tea and veterinary care technology and uh, cattle dynamics. Some of the things for uh, technology and equipment. For the product wise, you can say um, value-added dairy products like cheese, smoothies, flavored milk, custard, because we are number one in the milk production. So almost it is surplus now. So during the surplus, we have to convert it into value-added products and a lot of export market is there. So this is the opportunity in the dairy sector. And the next one is the uh, poultry and meat sector. So India is having a lot of po uh, bovine population. So here, uh, as technology and equipment suppliers, there is a lot of uh, new technology and meat poultry processing. Abattires is coming up. There is a trade schemes in the government of India for uh, setting up of the abattires. And then cold chain also here, and then put testing laboratories. This is very, very important in this particular sector because it's highly perishable commodities. So the safety and uh, uh, self life is very, very important. So put testing labs plays major role and uh, government is giving a lot of incentives for this also. And then uh, products wise, a lot of uh, frozen and chilled products, ready to eat, ready to cook. And then even Indian ethnic foods nowadays picking up very nicely. And then uh, egg powder plants and then uh, hatcheries, these are some of the things which is uh, uh, opportunities to be looked at. We look at the next sector is the fruits and vegetable processing sector, and it is also one of the most perishable commodities. So here also the cold chain pack houses, and then a lot of uh, uh, opportunities in the logistics, and the end product storage at, and point of retail also. And then packaging, it's a very upcoming, new technologies are available for packaging of fruits and vegetables, or even in cartoons, and then modified atmospheres, a lot of opportunities are in this one, and put testing laboratories also very much important. And then product-wise, nowadays the nutraceuticals and the health foods are coming up, um, a lot of importance is there in the market, not only in India, the <coughs> overseas market also, a lot of convenience foods are up to come up, and then beverages, even like traditional foods like Mungupani, coconut water, and uh, even uh, <coughs> functional uh, beverages also, a lot of importance is there. And then uh, processed foods for the uh, uh, ice cream and the yogurt industries, that also yeah, one of the opportunities in this particular fruits and vegetable industry. And then uh, coming to the uh, durables, like food grains, that is uh, uh, compared to the perishables, there is not much wastage in the food grains, but we are producing more and uh, it is uh, even a 1% loss uh, in the total value chain will be a big loss compared to the other commodities here. And here also nowadays the, apart from our regular staple like uh, uh, rice and wheat, and nowadays the uh, superfoods are, we can say millets, uh, gaining a lot of importance and uh, people are uh, uh, growing as well as the uh, people are even buying uh, and consuming uh, millets and millet based products due to its uh, a lot of uh, importance. And uh, so a lot of opportunities there in the uh, millet based value added products and then for machinery for the development of uh, processing of this type of uh, millets. And then fisheries are concerned, uh, India is having a lot of uh, uh, coastal, coastal line. So we are producing almost 13.4 million metric tons during 1880, 1890. And then, uh, so in the frozen farm, a uh, lot of uh, value added products can be developed. And uh, government is also giving a lot of the incentives to open this particular sector. And uh, here also we can go for ready to cook, ready to eat, canned and the frozen goods are uh, uh, important products from the fisheries. And uh, apart from these sectors, another sector is the coal, food retail sector. 
this is one of the sector uh, which we have uh, seen in the uh, pandemic time uh, where the uh, most of the uh, hotels are uh, everywhere closed so at that time the processed foods having lot of uh, 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 importance during the uh, uh, first wave or the second wave time so uh, government has taken every effort uh, even during the uh, uh, lockdown due to the movement of uh, trucks and then when the logistics were stopped that government of india take, uh, took lot of steps to uh, movement of the food products without any uh, hindrance and then uh, everywhere they put seeds so it has uh, the estimate in 2023 it will reach 827 billion usd so that is the uh, future prospects of this particular food retail in india so it has a, a cgr of 9.23% so it is very very high in the compared to the other industries so these are the uh, a yeah, little glimpse about the uh, opportunities in the food processing sector uh, since the time is very limited i am moving to some of the government incentives this is the latest development um, and also i am not going to talk about all the schemes i'll highlight some of the schemes and uh, i will be uh, uh, talking more about the uh, latest this is pm fm scheme so the uh, sampada scheme is one of the very uh, important classic company from the uh, ministry of food processing industries it is a scheme for agro marine processing and development of agro processing clusters it has an outlay of around 6000 crores uh, for the five year plan in this uh, particular sampada scheme we are having this uh, uh, eight plants eight schemes are there one is mega food parks and the integrated cold chain and value addition infrastructure creation and expansion of food processing preservation capacities infrastructure for agro processing clusters creation of backward and forward linkages food safety and quality assurance human resources and the institutions operation greens so these are some of the uh, uh, important schemes running under this and uh, this is for uh, mainly for the major uh, food companies as well as the uh, medium also but uh, due to this uh, schemes only the uh, uh, big players are benefited and the small and the uh, very small company micro enterprises are not benefited so government has uh, understood this and they have come up with other schemes for this and recently this uh, production link incentive scheme for, for food, food processing industries was introduced by the government of india along with the other sectors also totally 10 sectors uh, government uh, introduced uh, during this atmanirbhar bharat uh, scheme uh, about the uh, incentive uh, production linked incentive scheme it has uh, outlay of 10900 crores uh, it is for the uh, big companies mainly the objective will be to support the um, companies which have stipulated minimum sales and willing to make minimum stipulated investment for expansion for processing capacity and branding abroad to incentivize the emergence of strong indian brands the idea is to um, though the some of the companies having good market in the uh, indian uh, domestic whereas they are not known in the abroad overseas market so government is uh, creating this particular scheme to create this indian brands worldwide uh, maybe as a collective or maybe as individual companies so it will have a, a creation of global food mag food manufacturing champions and then uh, to select indian brand of food products for global visibility and then increase employment opportunities of the off farm jobs through this development and then um, ultimately it has to uh, give the innovative prices for the farm produce and the higher income to the farmers so in this particular schemes uh, mainly the uh, the sourcing should be from the indian uh, farmers that is the big thing they can export even 100% export they can go for it whereas, whereas the uh, raw material should be sourced from the indian market so that the farmers can be benefited and coming to the next uh, which point i am going to share about this uh, uh pradhan mantri uh, formalization of micro food processing enterprises because uh, iapt in means of food processing technology is closely uh, involved in this particular implementation of the scheme as a knowledge partner uh, and nictam and iapt are playing major role in this and it is picking up very nicely in the past uh, uh, one year it has itself this um, big made big impact in the uh, small industry sector. so normally uh, in india uh, the there are a lot of unorganized food processing sector almost uh, for the past so many years from the department of food processing industries to the uh, uh, upgradation of ministry of food processing industries 
so far the uh, government was uh, cons concentrating on the big players so that they, they can invest more and they can give lot of uh, employment opportunities and they can consume more raw materials like that but it has come up nicely but though it has not make a big impact so whereas the 25 lakh units almost uh, in india they are almost contributing 74% of the employment in the processing sector and uh, these are 66% of the units are in the rural areas and about 80% of them are family based and it needs lot of uh, um, hand holding for these companies and then uh, these units largely fall within the category of micro enterprises and also these units uh, face lot of challenges which limit their performance and the growth so these challenges include lack of access to the modern technology and equipment training access to institutional credit lack of basic awareness and quality control of products and the lack of branding and marketing skills so this is the area uh, we are the government uh, uh, concentrate on this particular points and this scheme has rolled out and uh, through this the enormous food processing sector contributes much less in terms of value addition and output despite its huge potential so here the with the background this uh, scheme was uh, rolled out with this following five objectives um, here this uh, through this scheme there will be increased access to the uh, credit mainly or maybe micro food processing entrepreneurs they are having a, a big uh, uh, like lagging behind in the access to the credit so through this they will be uh, having good access and then uh, even the fpos self help groups and then cooperatives and then through this scheme uh, increase success for the process to professional and technical support uh, mainly sometimes they will make the product but they are not able to market it or they are not able to brand it uh, these are the issues faced with them. through this they can be made it and then the strengthening of the institutes so research and training in the food processing sector this is also through this iapt and the nitam and the other uh, state level uh, institutions or icr csr institutions state agriculture university Uh, mainly the agriculture engineering colleges are playing major role in this particular thing and then increase access to the common services like uh, common processing facility laboratory storage and all those things and then through this around 2 lakh enterprises in the unorganized sector will be brought into the formal framework and uh, they will be uh, registered and they will be having a gst and they will have a uh, aadhar registration and then they will follow the fssa guidelines through this total uh, uh, safety network will be bring to the uh, food processing sector uh, dr so, vengadala ji uh, yes. request you to conclude it within a minute yes sir yes please thank you sir so as i told it is a uh, all india centrally sponsored team so it approaches a holistic one product approach and it is having out of 10000 crores and then say sharing pattern is government of india 90% and the states 10% whereas in the united states it is 60 party and then uh, 10% for there are allotments for uh, north eastern states ssp like that and uh, pattern of assistance uh, here the thing is a uh, lot of hand holding support by district resources preparation of dpr bank loan skill and entrepreneurship training then uh, support for capital investment mainly as it was the registration for fssa gst geogada branding and marketing and it is uh, a combined uh, sec- scheme so the both state and central have a major role so for the uh, fpos and the self help groups it will be 30% uh, uh, credit link capital investment and then also common infrastructure also 30% and there will be but for marketing and branding there will be 50% uh, uh, grant will be given and for self help groups each member will be a 40 40000 rupees up to 40000 suppose if there are more it will be a more essential it is governed by the yeah. national level and then state level the sick level uh, committees are there and uh, for applying you can visit the website for right. more yeah. information and uh, see, these thank are you. some some of the issues in this. Okay. okay thank you I, i thank you thank you very much i think very detailed uh, uh, can you please uh, close the presentation uh, thank you slide sharing yes yeah uh excellent presentation from the government incentives i uh, i was thinking of looking uh, probably listening to a bureaucrat about the program given anyway i would i would love to have more up from the pharmacy which products can be sold because i see still pickles outside still very less uh, export we have probably we'll get that in the soon when it comes to the question and answer what are the actual scientists are helping 
to bring which type of products the farmer has to make. Let me go get on to the we are running a bit late time. So let me come to the next uh, speaker. I would like to request Vishwanathan. Yes, sir. Nathan, can you yes, please yes. Uh, introduce the next speaker? Uh, next speaker you. is uh, Dr. A. Caroline Ratnakumari. So, one of our alumni uh, graduated with all uh, undergraduate and postgraduate from TNAU. So, he started a mm -hmm. career at uh, Indian Institute for Horticultural Research, ICAR, Bengaluru. She has contributed to the farming community by developing about uh, 10 gadgets. The notable ones uh, we see are uh, onion set planter, onion drum seeder, hot water treatment system for mango, and grader for pomegranate and mango. Currently, she is a principal scientist in the Division of Agriculture Engineering and Post Harvest Technology. Uh, Dr. Caroline, uh, yeah, yeah, you, it's, yeah, yeah. You, can, you can start uh, sharing your slides and start your presentation. Yeah, it's visible. Yeah, I think it has to go to slide show, no, sir. Is yes, it okay? Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. You, yeah. you make. Uh, okay. Thank you. Uh, Good. Yeah. Yeah. Is it audible, sir? To your yes. Yes. Very well. Very well. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Yeah, uh, good evening to everyone. Uh, so this is a small work which we have done at IHR uh, towards Terrace Garden. Uh, yeah. Actually, uh, we aim here for uh, basically for the apartments in city. Uh, so, sorry, uh, sorry, sorry Dr. Karani, can you? Before we are discussing uh, about the urban horticulture, this is almost. Sorry. Uh, Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Can you turn off your video because your, your voice sir, is breaking? Yeah. Can you turn off your video? You continue to talk with a slideshow because your voice is breaking. Probably bandwidth issue. Try that. Close your video. Okay. Ruby. Ruby. No problem. Go ahead and talk. Go ahead. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Is it one second, sir? Yeah, he might have given to the video open. Yeah. Uh, it's fine, sir, now? Yes. yes. Go ahead. You have to maximize. Doesn't matter. Okay. Hello? Slideshow. You have to press slideshow. So is it audible? Yeah, audible. Very good. Sound is good, but you, your presentation yeah. is not full flight show. So you make, uh, thank you. So go ahead, please. Uh, I think I have done it, sir. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead, please. Yeah. Yeah. I... Yes, sir. Uh, this is uh, almost in line with the uh, Mr. Naharaj who presented from Mumbai regarding urban horticulture. At IHR, we have done a small work for uh, apartment people who live in, uh, especially in cities, where they would like to have a uh, grow their own vegetables for their daily consumption to meet their family requirement. We have tried to have a small vertical structure as shown in the picture here. So this is basically a, a vertical, uh, so we have four levels of uh, structure and the, the, we have given a wheel to move uh, in the apart the utility area so we can move it and clean and we can grow four types of vegetables in the below level, which needs a higher length, for example, height, for example, brinjal, or tomato, which requires to be a, uh, around three to four feet height. We keep at the bottom and maybe we green vegetables in the middle level, which will not, which will grow only to a height of one feet and maybe some ornamental crop at the top, which will give a good appearance. And top, we have a water can, 25 liters of water can, which is again, we have given a drip irrigation line to all the parts. So we can just turn it on and we will be uh, watering to the, all the parts. The small work we have done at IHR, we, uh, we have demonstrated to the, people in city, it is well adopted here. So this is a small work I wanted to share with uh, the uh, uh, with our uh, August gathering here. So this is a design, which uh, though it was a small work, we have gone with the scientific and technical data to support whether it is possible. 
whether the light is sufficient to grow, whether the uh, we'll get the required yield will be there. So we have uh, gone with the experiment uh, kind of thing where we can see uh, like different levels of uh, parts. And what we have done is also size of part also we have standardized. Yeah, here, if you see the parts, for example, tomato required little bigger size, 16 inch dia and 12 inch height. Uh, for chili, brinjal piece, it is 12 inch dia and 10 inch height. Leafy vegetables, it's a rectangular part with uh, 26 inch uh, length, 8 inch width and 6 inch height. Medicinal plants still lesser the dimensions than the leafy vegetables. It's a kind of study we have done and we have optimized the part size. And it's highly suitable for the terrace or utilitarian type of family. And the height is also, a lady can reach the height to harvest the leafy vegetables and it can be moved. Here, another thing is we, have, we are utilizing the available area in the, in the city. The possible uh, crops are vegetables, leafy vegetables and ornamental crops and small few medical uh, medicinal crops. And this is what I explained, I have shown in a different uh, like little uh, closer view. We can see the water can here and the rectangle parts. I think unfortunately we lost yeah. her. I think I yeah, think I uh, uh, we will just uh, uh, give a couple of minutes for her to join. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, just give a couple of minutes for her. Uh, okay. We'll wait. Well. Yeah. Good morning, Professor uh, Singh sir. Yes. Uh, thank you, Professor Viswanathan. I I had difficulty to join. Uh, I was not able to stop Please video. To start video. Oh. Yeah, you, you can speak. Yeah, uh, yeah, now, now they are both okay. Now video and mute okay. both are okay now. I, I, I don't know. I try many times somehow. Some, it's fine now. She's back now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. She's yes. back. Uh, Caroline, you continue. This was last time we discussed we'd record and then present, but people are not listening. <laughs> but this is a problem with the bandwidth sometimes. Anyway. So is it Dr. okay now? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Go, go ahead with that. Please go on talk. So your, your, your time is going off. Please uh, go ahead. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I where I left continue. This is the cost uh, which is yeah, okay. Go to your uh, the slide yeah. where you talk. Yeah, yes, this is cost. Cost. Are a slide, uh, slide, 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 the slides? Yeah, it's a cost involved. 30 yeah, go ahead. 50, 50 rupees for the crop cycle of three to four months. So we'll be spending a uh, 50 rupees as a uh, uh, record in the XD. This cost 30,000, which will be. I, I, I think uh, uh, we, we, we should give our next, uh, in the next uh, session, an opportunity uh, because it's uh, difficult to hear. She has got a very low bandwidth. Uh, Dr. Professor Viswanathan, do you agree with uh, me? Yes, yes. Um, yeah, I think we can uh, go to the next speaker. Next we can speaker, tell her next, yeah. se next session, yeah. we will give her opportunity. But I think if possibly recorded one uh, is better for her because she has got a very low bandwidth. Okay. I think Dr. Srinivas Srinivas has joined. Are you joined? Yes. Uh, are you ready, no. Dr. Srinivas? No. Srinivas, you unmute. Dr. Srinivas, can you unmute? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. Dr. Karalin has joined. Dr. Karalin, uh, what we suggest is your yeah, yeah. Sorry, sir. Yeah. yeah I, sorry. Mona, I have changed. Uh, I have changed in my uh, this thing, sir. Uh, what is it? I have changed in my. Uh, okay. Go ahead. Just, I, think, I think she has only two more slides. No, can I think it will be all right. Go ahead. Go ahead and do it. Yeah, yeah I have changed also my. This. Yeah. So this is a car input which will be around uh, 850 rupees as a recurring cast and 15,000 as a cast of the structure. 
and if you see the weight what we calculated is uh, including everything it is 150 kg per square meter which is within the limit structural weight and part growing media water uh, and the plant everything it is around 150 kg weight and there is another one terrace garden which is in the size of uh, on any terrace 40 feet length with 20 feet and height 8 and 1/2 feet where we grow tomato chili brinjal cucumber this is also maybe um, Uh, for a quite long period, we can use this kind of terrace garden. This is also experimented at IHR, and uh, we have seen that we are able to get sufficient yield, and uh, light is also sufficient light. So uh, all the plants are receiving. It's about the like per cycle how much we are able to uh, harvest the uh, product produce. And this uh, like a uh, small uh, one slide which shows the hand tools uh, to if you if you would like to have a the uh, home garden what and all uh, kind of tools will be required like this everybody knows but select that let me share this information and in case if you want to have a shade net which is a low cost you do it yourself low cost which all the pvc fittings a small size 10 feet by 10 feet we can make without cpvc pipe with the, all the uh, bends and the three corners we can make our own shade net in which uh, we can keep all our pots And this is uh, demonstrated in our uh, uh, horticulture fair, well received by the city people. Thank you, sir. Sorry. No, no problem. Absolutely, uh, Dr. Karan. Absolutely, no problem. Uh, uh, this happens, and especially bandwidth when you are poor and bandwidth, it happens sometimes. Absolutely okay. Uh, it's a good. Actually, terrace garden was the uh, talk of the last two sessions we had. People are interested more in terrace garden. Uh, like it's more popular in the US and everything. I think you may attempt to explain scientifically. So we'll keep the questions to the uh, uh, the end. So we'll start with the next speaker, like uh, Dr. K. Srinivas. I think Dr. Vishnu Vishnuadan. Yes, sir. Please go ahead and introduce. Okay, okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, Dr. K. Srinivas Reddy is our uh, next speaker. Uh, he graduated from TNAU during 1980 to 84. And he belongs to the first uh, batch of four years team. So till then it was uh, five years uh, duration. He belongs to the four year uh, team. After that he had his masters and uh, PhD from IR in New Delhi. Started his career as system processor at uh, Acharya N G Ranga Agriculture University, Hyderabad campus. and later joined a senior scientist at the central institute of agriculture engineering bopal so that he worked in the area of developing sensors for uh, irrigation and controlling the irrigation and currently he is a principal scientist at icar central research institute for dryland agriculture hyderabad his areas of research are uh, hydrology of uh, micro watershed integrated farming system climate change and uh, Bio industrial watershed. Today he he will be speaking on bio industrial wastewater, climate resilient units for rural development. Doctor Srinivas, uh, you can uh, start your uh, screen. Share the screen. Yeah, I have shared and uh, are you able to hear to me? Yeah, you are uh, audible. You are audible. Hello. Yes, yes, you are audible. I am audible. Yes. Okay. Okay. For well, sir, I am. I am very sorry, Vishwanathan sir, and I could yeah. not join the session <laughs> in time uh, due to no preoccupied meeting with the director. No, yes, yes, I understand. And uh, actually, yeah. in Ayurveda, yeah. it was almost drenching. You know, for the last one and a half hour, uh, there okay. was heavy rainfall. Yeah. Yeah. So, can you, can you please share your screen? Can you please share your screen because we are running short of time yeah. actually. The one more speaker is there. Yeah, I have. Please, please. I have shared. Are no, you unable to there. see my? No, we are not. No, we no. cannot see it now. Now I, I suggest, please wait. You first open your uh, application, your presentation on the screen first before sharing. First on the open the open the application. Don't minimize it. It must be on the. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That may be reason.
Any no, issues you're having? No. Yeah. Do, do you have uh, I don't have backup. Uh, one, one, what we, one minute. Sir. Everybody just send the back uh, presentation to us. I can help you if you tell me what is happening. Can you show us? Can you see your presentation on the screen right now? On the main screen? Can you us? Yeah. You minimize this uh, screen, zoom screen, then open the PowerPoint. Yeah. Yeah. Now I will share the screen. No, we cannot see it. That's what I told you. Uh, you yeah, I can help you if you tell me exactly what is seeing the screen. Then I can help you out. Yeah. This my screen is not seen, sir. That is the problem. OK. I think uh, Vishwanathan. He, yeah. By the time we fix it up, we can call the next speaker if it is yes, there yes. because we will be running short of time completely. Be Brito, are you available? Sebastian? Brito, Sebastian? Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir, I'm available, sir. Yeah, yeah uh, please. please Sinivas, I Sinivas, would... Sinivas, you set right your screen. Then, uh, yeah, yeah. You can be a last speaker as you, you have decided in the evening itself. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now. Okay. So next think, speaker is our good friend, uh, engineer Sebastian Brito Raj. He is a stand executive engineer uh, working in uh, agriculture engineering department of uh, Tamil Nadu government. Uh, recently, he has been um, posted as a special officer to the additional chief secretary, government of Tamil Nadu at uh, Chennai Secretariat for the special schemes on uh, water conservation and related schemes. He graduated uh, from TNAU during 1987-91. He has uh, 23 years of work experience in agriculture engineering department. He mainly worked in his native districts, Dindukal and uh, nearby Madurai district. He is uh, passionate to give awareness on water management to both farmers and uh, public regarding rainwater harvesting and groundwater improvement. Motivated farmers to dig more than 1,000 farm ponds on their own and made them to irrigation as per water budgeting. He used to have daily interaction with more than 1.25 lakh farmers on social media and released more than 300 videos in uh, YouTube. So actually he is uh, the admin for a telegram group on uh, water management and farm development. Mostly the farmers and officers will be there. I'm surprised to see when I was added to his uh, Telegram group, there are 19,000 followers. With 19,000 followers, within half an hour, you'll see at least 200 messages will be posted with questions starting from, say, where the seeds are available, where uh, or uh, the chemicals are available like that. But uh, he used to collect the information and uh, post them appropriately. And see, in the last two days, there was also another uh, news in the local dailies. The public works department assessed the groundwater recharge taken place in the recent two years. The Indukal district topped in that with 7.5 meters of uh, water recharge. So maybe his contribution also made the recharge to this level. I am also from Dindigal. So you contribute, you take me also. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. I think now uh, Srinivas also... No, no, first let us, let us, let us continue, okay. please. Okay. please okay. Continue Thanks, with uh, Brito Raj, as we told. Yes, yes. Please, he can, Brito, he can, please uh, continue. Please continue. Good evening, sir. Good evening to everyone. Sir, I am audible. Yes, yes. yes please go ahead. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir, I am sharing my screen, sir. Sir, is it visible, sir? Yes, very well. Yes. 
good evening to everyone actually uh, i thought of uh, talking to our uh, colleagues or uh, our junior uh, uh, agriculture engineers in this uh, forum so i prepared my uh, powerpoint uh, yeah. everything <laughs> in a very yeah. ground level or low level the bit of bit of let's give the expert forum so you can skip all those things come to the what you work you have done probably yeah, sure, so sir. that and what we others can no. benefit from there yes sir so sure, sir um actually uh, this is the uh, uh, basic details what we are uh, seeing as a issues in water management in tamil nadu um in uh, appeal area generally more than uh, the requirement of water the ex the removal of excess quantity of water is a main problem in appeal area so more than water management uh, we can say uh, how to uh, manage the irrigation to help the farmers to uh, so to to reduce the soil moisture in in many of the cases actually for the past uh, for at least for 9 months um, in hilly regions we are having excess water in even in the fertile area during rainy season the people cannot save the water mainly because they are actually um, we are uh, giving training to establish soil and water conservation techniques in uh, techniques for the uh, pata lands in the fertile area but they are not doing uh, mainly because they are fear of root decay they are not prepared for, with uh, soil water conservation pra uh, practices so finally they will end up in very uh, less yield uh, in wells and bore wells so they are uh, uh, they are worrying uh, or they are suffering in the next 9 months of the uh, more 9 months in most of the years even in summer uh, with the available less rain or scarce rain with the available less yield in the well and bore well they are mainly aiming to put more uh, new bore wells actually in tamil nadu uh, out of 36 uh, districts almost 21 districts the depth of bore depth of uh, bore well is around 1000 feet to 1600 feet 50 feet they are drawing water from that deep and uh, again they are wasting the water very uh, uh, in uh, very uh, uh, without any justification so in this condition uh, they, this is the actual uh, fact we are uh, visualizing in uh, many parts of the tamil nadu uh, even in delta districts during summer uh, the uh, summer that means kuruvai season the lesser water they start the um, uh, cultivation with uh, well uh, water in the well and bore well actually they are not uh, saving any uh, good practice uh, saving the ground water and they are not uh, having sufficient water to start the kuruvai or uh, summer crop so because of that actually they lose one season because already between uh, february to may there won't be any crop in that area after that even with lesser water in well and bore well they couldn't start the uh, kuruvai crop so almost 6 to 7 months uh, they used to lose in delta districts in winter uh, time also majority of the uh, uh, delta districts other than even other than uh, eight main delta districts the nearby uh, districts uh, to the delta districts uh, that around um, 14 districts they are facing water logging actually again the, um, the problem is they wish to uh, remove the water log water log the condition or uh, they were uh, they wish to remove excess water to the drains these are the main basic problems we are seeing in the state from right from hills to the 
coastal area. So in this condition, more than anything, I am expecting the agriculture engineers to I didn't give um, uh, I didn't, um, uh, agriculture engineers to have some identity for giving solutions to the water problem in all terrains. Actually, these are the main issues. Many in many places, people used to ask what I have to do. Many of our engineers, they doesn't know how to give uh, solutions to the uh, water, existing water problem in the particular field. They, uh, actually, I wish, to, I wish uh, to identify the problem and actually the uh, lack of confidence in prescribing a solution. Actually, they are uh, very... Uh, Inferior, having inferiority complex to give some solutions. This is the problem also we have, uh, I am seeing. Again, the la lack of follow-up. We are, we are giving some solutions to the farmers and what, what is the impact on the solution in various uh, layers of the la uh, state. So in this condition, this is the overall uh, Scenario of uh, our Tamil Nadu irrigation level. Many of the irrigation structures belongs to PWD. Even the micro MI tanks and other small tanks also belong. Uh, they are it, uh, everything is with rural development department. Actually, where, where is the identity of our agriculture engineering department in Tamil Nadu? Actually, in Tamil Nadu. Our department also shifting its focus from soil and water conservation in a very uh, drastic way. In this condition, it is the prime need of our agriculture engineers to stand, to, uh, to make the identity, to have some good uh, practices in Tamil Nadu. So for that, what they have to do? They have to update the knowledge. Update the knowledge means they, they should have data on what, what all the works are that already completed. What all the actual soil and water conservation works have to be proposed in a particular place. What all the already uh, happened success stories in a particular place on a suggestion, what may be the new suggestion we have to give. What are the soil-based soil -based water harvesting technologies, either, whether it is for laterite soil or loamy soil, or for clay soil? What, what is the actually soil-based water harvesting techniques we have to give? Again, the, uh, if you are working in a particular block means, the pre-assessment of the uh, type of soil water and water harvesting structures has to be decided by a particular engineer. So more projects can be planned and can be submitted. They should know the knowledge on the groundwater and irrigation technology. Yesterday, we are having um, uh, a question asked to the uh, higher officials to give projects for 45 crores. But the ultimate uh, result was we are, uh, they told we are not having any sufficient project right now with us. That's why I'm saying more, more projects have to be planned and to be kept ready. These are the some of the snaps I have to show because more than giving water or the requirement of water, the un unjustifiable usage of excess water to uh, degrade our land and our profits. This is for coconut. Again, this is the uh, decay we have for, due to excess application of water. This is excess water application in onion. This is the impact. Yeah, this is the impact in uh, flowers. 
this is the excess water uh, impact in paddy this is a this, this is the actual condition of a clay soil which is having hard pan but uh, it's having sufficient moisture inside with that without knowing the moisture inside if you give excess water you will get the decay because why i am saying all the decay related problem means right now in tamil nadu more than 3500 acres of land is under small onion what is the simple suggestion i gave it to them means instead of giving water in once in 5 days you just postpone it to 7 days you can extend it to another 2 days with that simple advice now you can uh, see the all the markets are over flooded with small onions yeah, last year or the penalty met year the onion production was very less in tamil nadu right now it you know, the rate is 5 rupee per kg that sort of quantity of onion is available so uh, understanding a terrain if you if it is laterite soil you have to put the um, clay soil over it and you have to give minimum irrigation you can uh, have some pickum bending activity in the uh, fertile region to have more water harvest more water the excess uh, application of irrigation water may kill a plant in many of the clay soil areas so uh, again the even in the delta uh, region how we have addressed a address to remove the excess water means we uh, we we constructed some ring wells to transfer the water from the clay top clay soil into the ground some 10 to 12 feet deeper just um, transferring the excess moisture we got very good results in uh, delta regions by growing timber trees this is the, again one more thing how to convert a calcareous soil into a productive soil just by giving um, these are the very simple solutions minimum 6000 rupees to 10000 rupees we have to spend to give to convert a land into productive land these is all the some of the techniques we are we are giving to the to rejuvenate bore well and well so these are actually uh, these are the techniques some of our engineers have to follow in the root level to address the need of the poor farmers these are the some of the um, actually lack of consultancy is observed in many of the soil water conservation uh, by the private engineers private agriculture engineers because the very big vacuum uh, uh, is there in agriculture front uh, in tamil nadu i what that's what i am seeing perceiving in many of the places in micro irrigation tank and lake, lake management larger farm maintenance larger farm designing farm layout farm machinery and implement selection how to suggest as a uh, solution again the non conventional energy resources and linkages with the above all swc matters again the polyhouse the, the very declining of the growth of polyhouse greenhouse operations the processing of agriculture produces everything involved the knowledge database and the technology transfers it has to be it has to happen by with our own interest so what are the solutions the solution is we have to have more collection of data with us we have to read more books we have to watch youtubes to have uh, information from even other countries to have uh, better knowledge on uh, better knowledge to adapt in our state we have to travel a lot in a villages to acquire the basic need of a particular farmer even if a, a district administration or state administration asks the voluntary involvement in involvement of 
providing a information or suggestions to the administrator this is what the need of the hour whenever they a uh, higher official ask uh, the engineers used to go away from the uh, particular scenario this is because of uh, in, in we can i can say it is inferiority complex so this is because of non collection of data non collection of knowledge so even in scheme works beside scheme works the basic interaction with the farmers of all sections and finding answers to their question can raise our knowledge this is the very ba basic thing we have to have an update of knowledge on allied departments like central ground water board state ground water board agriculture horticulture animal husbandry forestry fishing farming apiculture everything a farm a agriculture engineer has to be be eminent in each and every subject to to give better consultancy because it is the time to make ourselves identity give identity to the before the masses because we are not having anything uh, with us in tamil nadu all the water resources are with somebody else even narega work is uh, uh, stealing everything from agriculture engineering so what is left with us where is our future what is the uh, future of the new students from the agriculture engineering how we have to pave a way in the in uh, towards the future everywhere our urbanization is happening everywhere people are not working they are very slow in action uh, all are using more liquid um, liquors in uh, farm lands uh, or the farmers are drinking more and they are spoiling the health and they are not working in the field in such a condition the labor labor availability is very very less in many parts of the state and the product is going very very below so in this condition what is the role of the agriculture engineer they have to come up very with very good knowledge and better information to improve the betterment of the state this is sorry to simple, this is my simple uh, presentation uh, this is my uh, name of the youtube and telegram link Okay. Uh, in english it is called water management and farm development in tamil neer neer melandi tamil thank you so much for hearing my lecture thank you sir thank you thank you brito i i think i uh, just let me let me have few few lines about you i never expected this uh, i think uh, dr reddy could hold on for a while with your voice i will just i will call you uh, can you please stop sharing Can you please stop sharing, Brito? Yes, sir. Yeah, stop sharing, please. Thank you. Uh, I'm I'm really surprised that the uh, the points what you raised was the points we were raising uh, for the last two years in this forum also. I think we insist uh, we we have a not a correct connection with the farmers. Most of our work being done, you pointed out very clearly on that. And several things what you talked about uh, water, we we waste water. Uh, really waste water i have seen it myself that's yeah. one of the reasons what i say is uh, what i tried to insist is to see the water is most important than fertilizer both you explained very well you you also talked uh, can, can you please others can mute yeah um so then uh, actually you also pointed out very important about agriculture engineers role and what an agriculture engineer must do i think that is something of uh, Uh, uh very very interesting and i think we are also looking for that and uh, I, i don't know i i hear from can you please can you mute your mic please can you mute your others mic. others others okay now uh, i agriculture engineer this i think you should know tamil nadu is the second state which has got a separate directorate for agriculture engineering uh for a long time Uh, i think another one is madhya pradesh and sixth is tamil nadu i think others are we are trying for a directorate but see the situation of the agriculture engineers i myself my own classmates were chief engineers i know the problems which were existing 
and i think it's uh, he told very clearly you told about uh, that juniors are not coming up against whatever the bosses want in the same scenario i observe also in universities and everywhere we will change it we'll stop it for discussion afterwards i'm excited because uh, excellent views you proposed we'll have the last speaker very short another 10 minutes only plus we'll finish it srinivas ready uh, i think uh, viswanathan please take it up then we'll have questions i'm sorry for the delay sorry today dr srinivas uh, we can start the already has been introduced dr srinivas if 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 there is no time we can uh, have his talk in the next session okay uh, huh i think that's okay he's yeah i think he lost his connectivity is available but uh, he lost the connectivity no two three times it is happened okay yeah. i we will uh, have him next i think still has some problem still has some problem hmm okay uh, i think uh, we go ahead with the, now i open the floor for uh, question and answers i think all of you can turn on your uh, videos please i request all of you turn on the video we can have question and answers uh, i need a few seconds to see the hand can you please raise hands or raise hands on the menu so i will see you uh, ram i see the hand uh, ram you go ahead because you raise the hand i see first mr ram you raise the hand no anybody else uh many speakers have can i speak sir yeah please go ahead uh many speakers have given very good examples of how we can Uh, help the small and subsistence farmers improve their productivity uh, my question is what can be done to scale these good practices which have been mentioned by various speakers what is really needed so that we can have a big impact on the lives of the poor uh, uh, this uh, this i think a very generic question i will start replying you because i've been listening to most of the speakers for the last two years experts i think it's a very difficult question to say to scale up because even at the level what we have we don't understand uh, many of the problems we don't have solutions according to me i think probably professor gajendra singh is listening he is probably can summarize and give uh, his opinion on this uh, very critical question yeah please thank you sir thank you uh, you you are very right this is very difficult uh, issue the one of the problem is that the scientist thinks it's not his responsibility to take it to the consumer the farmer okay and the extension system in india has almost come to a grinding halt now so academic institutions universities and research institutions produce the output and the state departments are responsible for extension but there is a big wall between the these two organizations or two sets of organizations until less we have a we integrate these things like we started very well with the state agriculture universities on land grant pattern we are teaching research and extension were all three integrated extension people were charged to bring the problems from farmers to the university so researchers working on the labs in the fields experimental fields and take results back that system is hardly there is very limited so i don't know how to put uh, the extension system uh, on the track i have I think the state governments uh, think they are the boss they are the boss because they have the money okay they control the money and the universities and institutions have no do not have finances do not have the extension people and also unfortunately our own colleagues in academics are reluctant to go to the farmer yes i i think we do a lot of research on the computer screens we are growing everything processing everything is done on the computer screen and we have a, we spend very limited time 
in reality with the users. Sorry, I'm a little harsh. Yeah, no. I no, no, I, I, I think I want to supplement it. Uh, give, you, give you one, one minute to supplement it because I've been fighting for this, all of you know, for the last two years. I've been very rough rather. This is because I asked the Vice Chancellor must spend 15 days, uh, let us say every six months, uh, in a form without telling he's a Vice Chancellor. Okay, because they are the ones who are sitting in the, uh, actually to decide with the bureaucrats, with the politicians. Okay, this problem is, they don't know the real problem. I tell you what is the problem of cotton farmers in Maharashtra. I can tell you each farmer, okay, what is general, and you can agree, disagree, 100% you agree with me if you know the farmer. But the problem is, what is told and discussed outside is completely different. Like even the processing, whatever it is. I think we have to, uh, we have to accept the truth that we have to go to the farm, discuss, then only we have listen to you. Otherwise, put those people who are sitting there in the board of meetings, whatever it may be, responsible, accountable. For example, solar pumping, we talk so much. Now he talks about, Tamil Nadu talks about uh, 1,000 uh, feet of depth of pumping. And the same problem with solar pumping, last year we had a very extensive webinar series to show the drawbacks of it. And then we told everything. Now we have 20,000 in Tamil Nadu government gives. Whereas 20 lakhs was supposed to come from uh, central government, which is almost now not visible so much. Thank you. Sorry taking my time on this excellent topic. We'll come back to this. I will ask questions now. Ramesh Deshpande is raising hand for a long time. Ramesh, please. Oh, hello. Uh, yeah, Ramesh. Dr. Dr. Said and Dr. Gajendra Singh, you know, this is, these have been excellent presentations. They have raised a number of policy issues. How, how do we take these policies with the government? I mean, you are, you are doing such a valuable work. We have to articulate these issues and take with them. We are now, you know, from this IAG angle, Dr. Gajendra Singh knows and you also know, we are organizing the end of September a major session on horticulture. Yeah, and you no, know, and you also in that uh, small scale farm machinery has very important. You know, I mean, uh, in horticulture also, and also in the uh, in uh, in as they said that in uh, in cultivation there is no small scale machinery available. We have to take up this issue formally with the government. You know why we can write to we write you know, we can write to government now. Recently <laughs> we have taken a we have recently taken major issues in agricultural education with prime minister's office. So let us write to prime minister. No, uh, and then uh, follow up, uh, give it to the press. You are uh, all afraid. You people who have no, I'm not afraid. Are... Ramesh, Ramesh, no. Ramesh, I'm, I'm not afraid. Only question, no. Ramesh, you, we have been talking about this for a long time. I just thought yeah. to interrupt you we, because the question is solution. I'm looking. See, question yeah. is just writing a report will not help. If I have, if I have two hundred of this uh, professor, let us, no, let us I'm go with solutions. Yeah. Now, I'm giving, I'm yes. giving solutions. I'm bringing now. For example, today you see so many people listening. Uh, they, they are coming to the line. They are listening. All of them. And let them they take their own time slowly because 30, 40 years they've been in the system. Give me three months' time. I'm not hurrying. Three months' time, I will show you 300 people following what we are thinking because everybody thinks the same thing. Only they are afraid to tell it out. And I am not afraid because I can, because nobody can, uh, because nothing, if I have to like a promotion or something, I'd look for it. So please hold on, Ramesh Deshpande. This particular forum doesn't have an answer to your question right today. I will take the next okay. question from Amal. Uh, Amal, no, I will come we, back to you. Yeah. We, we will help you. We, we, yeah, can take all the un, we can take all the unpleasantness, but we want to work with you and take we up will. this issue with the right people. You know? That's what we do. That's what we require. From yeah. heart, we want to do it. We will do it. Okay. That's thank you. Thank you, sir. That's my word. Thank you. My word. Okay. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Amal? Um, thank you. Uh, uh, by the way, sorry. Sorry. I have to uh, introduce Amal. Amal has given a talk on, uh, uh, I think, uh, from Nabat last year in our webinar series and uh, yeah, he he has talked about we talked about experience solar uh, pumping question amal please go on with your question or your comment um, uh, thank you dr said um, so uh, the issues that you know despondents are also raised is that uh, how do we really go about uh, uh, scaling up all these things and do we have the solution actually agricultural engineering department by itself is not an independent department Agriculture needs agricultural engineering, horticulture agri uh, needs agricultural engineering, marketing needs agricultural engineering, etc. So therefore, we should be the solution provided to other departments' problems. For that, we should know what is their problem also. So the issue is that we are we taught about integrated solution or in thinking of integratingly all the issues. First, integrate, uh, think integratively and then carve out a project for it, which is called uh, basically a project planning. 
then we can go to them then we can suggest that wahu our solution is going to help other departments as well including the farmers so therefore what i am saying is i have been discussing with the dean uh, uh, here locally that we should have at least ask them to give an elective how to think in a policy manner who is thinking policy i accept as some ias fellows who may not know anything about all these things and agriculture i am very serious about it yes so yes. agriculture department thinks only for agriculture department agriculture thinks for only agriculture department mm. who thinks integrated manner so we, and we think, is, we think. Ah, is there a method of thinking i am yes. the next tool for thinking there is a framework for thinking policies so therefore what i feel that there is a lack of skill in policy analysis and giving policy framework to yes. the government this Agreed. skill in addition to technical skills that we have unless we have this skill we will not be able to provide the advocacy role effectively this is my suggestion uh, yeah. abdul amal amal uh, abdul ali you see we have, we have got the uh, one of the best horticulturists in our group see this particular session what we started is conservation agriculture and urban agriculture it's very unique and last time last year you see the all the team i think you, i request all of you Who, who talk it? Please go to the YouTube channel. See automation agriculture. The, the channel. Okay, YouTube. dot com slash c slash automation agriculture. You will see what type of areas we have covered till now. The focus is same. I could now count probably thirty, forty of the professors and experts willing to go with that. I would say my word. Actually, I'm looking for some more to come. Uh, for for example, every area starting from economics to every area we want to come. Like minded thinking. We'll do. Give me three months time, like I told already uh, to Ramesh. We, we are in the line. We are covering today. For example, we covered first time the small implements. Still not enough, according to me. Still not enough. Many things we covered, like water. Water is very important. The first topic we have in the water. Let's have some more. So we have the practical solution. Next question, please. I will take next question. Uh, uh, okay, uh, Doctor Sinivas, ready? I first. Uh, I actually, no. I have. what we have been discussing about this agriculture engineering no i was also part of the isa <laughs> chapter and i was chairman of isa ap chapter earlier up to 2018 or so i saw after that i mean because of the bifurcation now things are different the question here is sir actually the most of the graduates are suffering because of the non availability of the government jobs i mean these people are looking for government jobs majorly and uh, one more thing actually government government of india has a written letter uh, under the leadership of uh, our uh, algasundaram sir uh, ddg the farmer ddg who retired uh, i think just uh, recently Uh, but no action by these state governments actually to even separate out uh, this agriculture engineering department and uh, no further correspondence on that uh, this, that is the problem yeah, why yeah, why yeah. i am telling uh, the presence of agriculture engineering people here is every structure and every farm pond even a simple farm pond to locate in its location construction and its inlet outlet designs And everything, I mean, it requires some that, technical skills, sir. Uh, right? I, I, I agree. I agree. I, and, I, but I agree. these people, you know, everything is given to this agriculture. Uh, 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 no, no, no. It, it, it's the I, I did, what, certain point I would say, Doctor Sinivas. It's the right what you're talking. We all is able to talk about every agriculture engineer when I talk. You know, I'm only last five years very back again after ten years uh, not in the mainstream. I'm back again, and I see everybody is talking about. This agriculture is important. Important. I told, what the hell you are doing? Not a single one I saw agriculture doing any productive work in the farm outside. No, no, no. Why? Why our people listen, are not doing, sir? Listen, Actually, listen. I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying. No, no. You take, you take example of Tamil Nadu. The, they are doing Tamil Tamil excellent Nadu. work in the agriculture Agreed. engineering field. We, no, no. we see, no, they no, no, have no, taken no. design of farm ponds, and they have really implemented very nicely. It's very, 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 very one point. That that's what Brito talked about. And, uh, and uh, machinery part is only given to them. And I think I don't think processing and all is given to agriculture engineering department. Okay, that's a this is one small point we are talking about. Only again, no other topic of agriculture engineering. But I think I remember still my Varesa Satyava Zuba Zuba. I remember this this whatever starting from microbiology everything. I still remember we studied uh, when I studied every subject. And I think we have to think together. An engineer makes a bridge. Bridge for all the people. We must make a bridge between horticulturists 
agriculture people yeah. agronomists everybody yeah. is important so let us not worry about the, the i don't think by having department just now i talked tamil nadu also has a problem of having department let us look at how to bring our strength in work outside let the farmers ask for it need to come i'm trying to do the same thing in maharashtra to an extent i think we have in our group also we have a lot of people who are all the sectors of agriculture engineering let's uh, i think this topic we don't have a solution now any other question to the speakers you have i think i would uh, Sir, that is true for talking and the discussion but the question is you know uh, when, when others allow you only you can <laughs> go to them na <laughs> the problem is uh, <laughs> nobody is there to support us actually first of all in the departments that is this is another problem actually we are another uh, education agriculture engineering educations are actually they have really uh, left it to the hops actually you know what is happening uh, under some technical issues uh, these uh, private engineering colleges think, have I opened think, agriculture I, I think they, these graduates are suffering actually the, uh, the, the doctor uh, because I, they I, don't I, have accreditation from the okay. icr we will cover we will and uh, acg doesn't recognize agriculture engineering as a technical education she was ready this forum is not for the topic uh, we got your point people are suffering sir actually oh, one is not a forum of and, uh, sir what can you do for me like that i am uh, from jnt you uh, hyderabad really? yeah. drop the ready i have to say sorry because this forum is not only for agri engineers okay we'll take it separately and the isa president is here and he will take it up separately some other day any other question you want to ask narendra shah you raise your hand i see uh, jisendra jisendra shiva sir you want to say few words no you are you have to unmute yourself uh, dr jitendra you have to unmute yourself the main point i wanted to say um, it is very good topic but i am also quite happy about the presentation made by uh, on the small scale vertical uh, farming yes i really like this is moving on including in india including in this big city but what i learned today best was he gave the details simple yeah. things of it i like to congratulate her but only request i have is if she if that institute haven't they some small yeah, private sector and so that they can sell some of these products at a low scale as it is being done in many countries that will be very useful congratulations to that as well thank you thank you dr karlin i think i will i will connect uh, jitendra with you so you will be able to uh, share share the presentation everything to him okay any other question yeah thank you sir okay i will do that uh, any any anybody uh, because if you raise your hand i i cannot see I to, now i can see both the screen uh, anybody else because we are uh, 24 minutes uh, dr indramani you want to add something so thank you dr sayed and uh, all uh, senior uh, colleagues and uh, my friends again uh, a very good session and uh, all you know good points have come and uh, the major you know issue is that professor singh said uh, there are two uh, two faces of the whole you know problem one is that uh, uh, we as agricultural engineering have to increase our uh, you know field experience and uh, we have to understand the problem as you said that uh, we have to become bridge between uh, you know different uh, agriculture science group so for that uh, uh, in a solution mode we have to go and we have to understand the field problem and that a ready is one who has been uh, basically doing in the field and that's why uh, he was raising the issue but uh, uh, this mushrooming is also you know uh, everywhere this agricultural engineering is coming and uh, people uh, proper uh, you know facilities are not there proper faculty is not there so that is another issue that already which needs to be addressed you raise very important point that uh, uh, one agricultural engineer in uh, every district headquarter that was uh, effort uh, by smd by uh, our uh, even dg and isa took it but state governments uh, have their own inertia 
but there are good news also like if you see the in uh, uh, bihar they had uh, direct appointment of 60 agricultural engineers and uh, they are doing uh, really very good and uh, in up also there is a uh, uh, lot of improvement uh, new recruitment has been done and uh, new joint director is agriculture engineer who we were raising that uh, the problem was not uh, you know if 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 uh, for mechanized Irrigation or uh, irrigation. If trained engineers are not there in the state, then uh, problem cannot be solved. So uh, uh, SMD and ISA is still uh, struggling for that. You know, to have one agriculture engineer position like we have district agriculture officer, district horticulture officer. Similarly, in present era, uh, agriculture is basically engineering led agriculture and. Uh, technology led agriculture and everywhere we are talking precision precision and precision so precision will come uh, through uh, engineering without engineering intervention it will not come so those points uh, need to be addressed but at the same time uh, which our professor singh said and dr sayed also said that uh, be in the uh, engineering colleges have to see that uh, practical experience is necessary and uh, platform like dr sayed which we started uh, last year and we are continuing they will play the role of uh, you know bridge this kind of uh, you know platform and you are very right that uh, uh, we we will after you know one summarize this session and uh, this we have to take certain things with the government one good thing is that uh, nowadays uh, even uh, central government is uh, very proactive Uh, regarding uh, engineering intervention and uh, uh, they are not uh, we should not say that they are sleeping uh, mnt division is very very active and uh, I, i i am having very frequent interaction and discussion and uh, recently made a presentation on uh, use of drones uh, in agriculture and uh, additional secretary had to discuss and they want to come to institution they want to go to Uh, uh andhra pradesh they want to go to tamil nadu they want to go to even uh, uh, maharashtra and they want to learn that how this modern tools uh, engineering tools will lead uh, uh, next generation agriculture so my i would like to summarize without taking much time that uh, uh, now or never this is the situation i mean so this is the very ripe and right time that uh, all this kind of forum this kind of platform like i say are uh, this what we are doing and uh, connecting all and making a you know two way uh, two prong approach one definitely we have to improve our quality and our technical competency technical competency of the uh, uh, you know our graduates and professor singh is uh, here and he has been guiding under nhp lot many project to this is state university has give has been given and uh, lot of work is going on this is now time to for the state agriculture universities and icr institutes who are uh, engaged and iits who are engaged in uh, uh, you know educating the students get connected recently uh, this uh, you know government is very serious that uh, Uh, iit teach and i teach agricultural engineering institution agriculture institution they must get connected and they come out to best solution uh, recently if you know that uh, a drastic uh, kind of program has been uh, launched that uh, like take delhi uh, and uh, all different institutions has been asked and we had a, a meeting a three four meetings we had even uh, science institution iit is medical institution this and that also join hand and for the adjoining area what are the problem water related problem solid waste problem air quality pollution problem all that has been identified and they have been asked to work together so why i'm saying uh, this that once you are bracketed with iits once are you bracketed with nits without raising your competency you will you will be exposed and if you raise your competency you will prove that you are the best one so so and agriculture has to basically uh, uh, is uh, is at the, you know uh, center stage and we have to the government college that whatever you do it should be farmer centric 
so this is the right time to uh, train our people uh, increase uh, their competency get hold this one act as bridge as you said that act as bridge and finding out solution i am very optimistic that uh, next 10 years are far that what prime minister has said decade and their agriculture engineers a uh, big agricultural friends have to play very important role i will uh, conclude that this is necessary that we must understand and that is what is written in uh, uh, you know what is uh, worldwide uh, now accepted that uh, biologist of 21st century must know engineering and engineers of 21st century must know biology but we cannot afford not knowing biology so that is there there i will conclude okay. that i i i am really very much optimistic there are problems but uh, we have to be optimistic and okay. uh, we will win over thank you thank you thank you dr indramani i want to mention here last year myself dr indramani only started the marathon for three months running this webinar series it came accidentally happen and i know uh, every day we used to talk for about one or two hours to fix the speakers to fix everything and i think one of the few guys i know indramani two weeks back we had a talk with a farmer he was in the field already i know him most of the time he is in the field so he knows the situation one one unfortunate part i want to tell because Dr. Shinu was ready. He told I S A. One unfortunate part I find he in I S A he works, but I find many people, eighty ninety percent people I don't get a response from them. They just want a title to be there, some post in executive post. We have to rethink. We have to rethink. Actually, I think I, this is a, this is a submission to all of you. Uh, like Andhra Mani works, and some more people I can tell. You know, but I don't want to divide people, and I I know that. But I think the question is, everybody must come forward. i mean whether you are senior whether you are 70 years 60 years doesn't matter because 20 years person also will know enough better than you we have to help them out thank you dr uh, gajin singh for the concluding remarks thank you sayed uh, i enjoyed the discussion and especially uh, two people uh, i remember i think uh, indigo uh, yes he brought the real uh, problems from the farmer level uh, i think uh, and uh, what he feels about the colleagues in the profession not doing the job sincerely i am also from dindigal i am also from <laughs> okay. i studied anyway. from dindigal then very well my one uh, less one thing we can learn from today's presentation is uh, indramani we have to we have four divisions in isa and we have the directors for those i think we have to have a basic database updated what is happening in our profession like we do not have a one place where we can look at what is happening in mechanization in a different states what is the status similarly processing post harvest maybe cia bhopal can take mechanization cfet can take processing maybe the irrigation part maybe uh, our uh, uh, water technology center or some other uh, institutions uh, i don't know we we have to have in isa a kind of updated information and this information should go to the colleges in a sense so the student when they graduate they know what is the status of their own profession and what are the problems what are the challenges okay so they have at least some exposure so i will like that we should work in our society to do this background i mean there is a introduction to agriculture engineering type course that should be right in the very beginning but towards the end some planning and policy with these uh, challenges i think uh, we have to look at the, at least two courses from that perspective and we have to ask volunteers who will do that okay i think when uh, we get people that okay you do this you director this this everybody wants to be director but they don't even <laughs> turn up they don't yeah. even join the meeting they don't even come to isa convention so i think uh, society has to we have to identify and promote workers who are the doers who deliver okay it doesn't matter what position they are let them be very young people if they are enthusiastic yeah. we should really love that we should because they have a long career and they will contribute over a longer period so i i, I think uh, uh, things are moving along we are learning every day uh, and we are identifying and i'm sure uh, after a few months we will be able to clearly pinpoint what need to be done and we will be able to put some papers together thank you very much everybody okay thank you friends it's very late actually <laughs>
uh, unless somebody has a, a point, uh, you raise your hand. Last chance for you to uh, tell your opinion or a question. Uh, otherwise, I would like to call this uh, session to the conclusion. Uh, anybody wants one more question? I don't see any hands. Hi. Uh, yes. Hello. I see Hello, Dr. Tiwari. Dr. Yeah, Dr. Tiwari. And Ramit, they yeah, have a question. Yeah, Sayyad, please. Yes. Uh, one second. First, the Ramit, yeah, yeah. Ramit, yeah. Ramit, then Dr. Tiwari. Yeah. Dr. Sayyad, about agricultural education, including engineering, we have recently written to Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji on how to re-engineering, how to re-engineer agricultural education. I will send you that communication. I will send you, you copies to you and Gajendra Singh ji. And you. you should follow up. You see, we should, unless yeah, you support yeah. this. Uh, so I will yeah, very yeah. shortly send you, okay? okay. Yeah. Thank All you. Yeah. Thank, yeah. You. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. And uh, yeah. uh, uh, Dr. Tiwari first, then Ram. Dr. Tiwari? Yeah, what I'm telling actually, we should uh, prepare uh, some it's not that we are all talk, talking that we are agriculture engineers are not taking up work. It means all the departments are supposed to take up work what is being done in agriculture university institutions. And uh, people are talking because they have a very small, you know, persons, those who can translate this activity in the field. But I will say everything is not negative. There are many positive things which yeah, has been I agree, done. I agree. See, Soil and water conservation work, which has been done in Rajasthan, soil and water conservation work done, which has been done in Maharashtra. A lot of work has been done. Why, you know, there are lacks no, no. of farm ponds have been constructed. <laughs> no, 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 this no, no, success no. story must be documented and no, 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 no. That these are the agriculture engineers they have taken up. Success story doesn't help us. Dr. Tiwari, I agree with you. Success doesn't help us because you come to Maharashtra. I tell you, they give the figure. The farmer, average earning of Maharashtra farmer, is 1,500 rupees to 2,000 rupees per acre per month. Okay, now you disprove it, it's going to be 6,000. Whereas Punjab, it's around 6,000 to 7, 7.5 thousand rupees per acre per month. Now imagine a professor gets 2.5 lakh salary, you think how many acres he must own in Maharashtra. So the biggest problem is we are talking about few examples. Yes, I know Tamil Nadu has done excellent last few years. What I'm talking is, we are responsible for all the population. See, we overproduce 30% of the crop everywhere, which is only three. We have monoculture. And we are talking about something else that we have, somebody has done it. I agree, but is, is it enough? Is it comparable to any other country? When you said, today I saw marketing, we are in 44th position. Somebody has posted, uh, uh, I mean, the World Bank, or whatever it is, agri-marketing, 44th position. So we have to see we can do much more. What I'm asking is not that we are not done. We've done excellent work. We have to improve more. I'll give it a RAM, please. Please, you have to unmute yourself, RAM. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, it's creation of a unified database because policies have to be based on real, relevant, uh, reliable data and evidence-based data. A lot of speakers have provided lots of different types of data available. So let's create a small team where we can make all these things available in a unified database. And I'll be glad to help with this. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Good. Mohan Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. Please ask. Uh, sir, uh, what I learned uh, during this my uh, one and a half or uh, two years, that uh, mentoring of this agriculture engineering students is the uh, is lacuna, and IAC can uh, uh, um, can take lead on it and uh, kind okay. of generate a Hello? mentoring to those students, those yeah, okay. who are uh, in the M Tech final year or B Tech final year or in somewhere okay. and they can be mentor, and that would be good to uh, okay. Okay. realize okay. the potential of agriculture engineers. That's it. Thank you. Sir. Okay, that's good. Thanks. I think I have, we have to. I would really call it off uh, unless some real important message somebody has. Uh, I'd like to thank all of you uh, for spending so much time, valuable time, your valuable time. But I think this is what I want everyone. And today I send a message saying that don't think it's not your domain. Don't think I know better than these guys who are going to speak. Have a heart. Help these youngsters to come up because they are the future. We think I have 70 years experience, 40 years experience. doesn't matter because you're not achieved that much. So let us help the youngsters. I'll request every time all of you participate, please. It will give the motivation what is required. And that's our duty as elders to do it. Thank you very much.
God bless you. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste. Yeah.